All right, welcome back to Fast Gadgets. And today we're going to talk about Linux in the news for Tuesday, November 29th. Got some very interesting articles that I wanted to go over with you. Uh, first and foremost is the Crypt Setup Vulnerability. And this is something you probably want to look into. Uh, threat post um, from Kaspersky, Kaspersky Lab uh, put out an article about the Crypt Setup tool that has a vulnerability that grants root shell access on some Linux systems. Now they point out that some of the systems that are being affected are Debian based and Ubuntu, um, but also that it is possible for Fedora to be infected, well I should say affected, let's hope we don't get infected. Um, some systems do use, I think it's called Dracut, maybe Dracut, I'm really not sure. Uh, which is an infrastructure tool that's used on Fedora instead of init RAM FS to create essentially a RAM disk that can be used to temporarily store uh, data. And the package in, a, in question is 2.1.72-3. So I actually went ahead and checked if I do, there's a couple of different ways we can do it. If we do DNF, uh, list crypt setup we do get a package listing here and notice that it is showing up as an installed package for me and I do have 1.72-3 and that is the affected version unfortunately now uh, I've done a DNF update recently and I haven't seen an update yet <clears throat> for that particular tool. Uh, so there is a known vulnerability. Now it is possible that your computer could uh, become infected but it really does take quite a lot. Uh, the problem is basically an incorrect handling of passwords when a partition ciphered with the Linux Unified Key Setup which is a disk encryption that might be used and is standard for Linux. If an attacker can be prompted with the uh, Lux password prompt, then it's possible that they could exploit the vulnerability by pressing enter over and over again. Now, the primary concern here is mostly public systems, so ATMs, airports, systems, labs, things like that where the whole boot process is protected by a password so in order to become infected um, with this vulnerability you really would have to have somebody who has access to the keyboard and mouse possibly a remote connection that's something I'm always concerned about so if you're running SSHD you might want to turn off uh, SSH temporarily and of course nobody's running Telnet or should be um, that way nobody can get remote access to your system and of course in your firewall you could block SSHD if you wanted to uh, that's another possibility but a fairly significant vulnerability especially for public systems you do want to do a quick check and just see which version you're running uh, DNF is the chosen command you could also do RPM and I'm gonna do a query all and just grept on uh, crypt setup so that's another command you could run to get a confirmation of which version you're running my my thinking is they're gonna be patched really quickly so don't panic if you don't have remote access enabled to your system and you're not allowing uh, public access to your system physically um, not a huge concern but if we're talking about servers or workstations that are publicly accessible this is something definitely we would want to look at and in other news, although I personally have no interest whatsoever in VR at this point in time, uh, Steam VR is going to get Linux and Mac OS X support in the next few months. So as it stands, what I do like about this is, you know, just the fact that in order to enjoy VR, you basically have to be using Microsoft right now. But coming very soon is uh, Steam support for virtual reality 
in Windows and Linux. So to me, that's pretty exciting. I would look forward to trying something out if there was Linux support. Um, now they talk about the graphics APIs that are out there for Linux. As you know, we have OpenGL, but there is a successor, Vulkan, that's coming out. I'm curious to see how Vulkan's going to do and if it's going to be a uh, good replacement for OpenGL. OpenGL is a bit long in the tooth, but it does do pretty well, all things considered. What I will say, though, is OpenGL performance, for the most part, cannot be matched by, say, DirectX 12. Um, I think we all know that if you try to play a game in Linux with OpenGL, unless the game was specifically coded for Linux, it's really not going to run all that well. And another interesting tidbit in the news comes from Kaspersky Lab once again. And I kind of chuckle at this particular um, blog post. So uh, Kaspersky has come up with their own black box um, operating system that's supposedly hacker proof you know my personal opinion is nothing is hacker proof uh, you could say hacker resistant but as a good friend of mine in the industry used to say you know security and locks are essentially a deterrent we can't really guarantee that they're not going to be able to get through we're just hoping that we put in enough deterrence that we actually stop somebody uh, or they maybe quickly lose interest. Uh, so if they're doing scanning, for example, port scanning, and they're looking for a certain vulnerability, and you have it patched, that's a deterrent. So, And I feel like whenever somebody says, this operating system is hacker-proof, it cannot be broken, what does that make you think? Gee, I should try that, right? What's the chances, right? Doesn't it sound familiar? You know, this is an unsinkable ship. There's no way the Titanic can sink. We've got watertight bulkheads that only go three quarters of the way up the ship so the water can flow over the bulkheads. Hmm. Well, anyway, uh, they're really bragging about the fact that everything has been built from scratch. And they want to point out uh, not even the slightest smell of Linux. A couple of questions comes to mind for me. Okay, they're bragging about this operating system that took them 14 years to build. If it's not open source, which I'm not sure of at this point, you really don't have the open source developer community working to help you find vulnerabilities and fix them. So how big was their dev team? Was there only 2, 3, 20 people? Um, why did it take 14 years? And how is the process of security and external testing vetted? So if you're saying your OS is hacker-proof, and I'm not saying they said that. Really, the article indicated that. Don't mind my puppies. Somebody's here, so they got to go and see who it is. Uh... It's not Kaspersky themselves, as far as I know, that says it's hacker-proof. I think it really was um, the slash dot uh, person who posted the article. So, what do you think? Is there an OS that's hacker-proof? Well, as far as this operating system goes, it remains to be seen. Um, but you might want to check this article out. It, it is really interesting. One thing they do say, though, is that this particular uh, operating system would be great for control systems, IoT systems, all the systems right now that we're having problems with. So it could be that it's really useful and helpful, but is it open source, or are they simply expecting everybody to license the operating system? Which, again, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Companies can definitely do that. There's nothing wrong with expecting, um, you know, licensing or try to make an operating system for profit. So I'm certainly not against that. I'm not anti-capitalist or anything like that. Um, but I do think with open source uh, operating systems, you know, security is 
strongly vetted. Think of the fact that most of the backbone of the internet is comprised of Linux systems. I mean, that's extraordinary. And when security vulnerabilities come up, like crypt setup that we were talking about, they're usually patched very quickly. So we'll see what happens, Kaspersky. Should be interesting. If you're my subscriber, you probably know it's old news by now, but Fedora 25 is now available. Um, I'm not really sure I agree with this article. It makes it easier to switch from Windows 10 or Mac OS to Linux. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, my personal opinion is that the installer is pretty much the same as it's always been, so I can't say that it's easier uh, to switch from Windows 10 or you know another operating system but I will say that it does seem nicely refined although uh, I have encountered a few bugs as of late that seems to have crept in uh, since uh, the beta has ended and they officially released it so I'm going to talk about that in another video certainly not showstopper bugs and they are application level bugs so it very well could be a problem with the applications themselves not with uh, Fedora 25 and the two apps I'm talking about specifically are Voco Screen, which is the capture tool that I use and Caden Live and both of these were recently updated so I have a suspicion that it's completely independent of Fedora 25. My dogs are really happy right now. Mom must be home. Fedora 25 definitely a very robust operating system and something that you could put to use on pretty much any system. Right now I'm running the default GNOME interface. Now I am using Xorg because the previous Voco screen that I was using for whatever reason would not work with Wayland but now that Voco screen has done a new release I think I'm going to go ahead and try Wayland and see how things work out. It might solve the issue I'm having with Voco screen. Uh, specifically since the new release the audio and video are not syncing so it does take a tremendous amount of work uh, to get my track synced when I put it into Caden Live and yes it is the source and yes I have tried many different settings on it um, I have went through changing the frames from 15 to 20 30 60 and I have changed the format and the video codec several times but nothing seems to help so I'll give it a try and Waylon to keep you posted. And last, uh, the city of Munich, Germany, surprisingly, looks like they may consider abandoning Linux for Windows 10. Uh, if you don't know, uh, Munich was the largest city at that time, actually still, that went and switched all of their systems to open source. So they did away with all of the... Uh, Windows implementations at the time which was very disconcerting for Steve Ballmer so he took it upon himself to fly out to Munich and met with the mayor personally which coincides with um, the council making a decision to possibly look back at going back to well going to Windows and predominantly Windows 10 or possibly uh, considering um, giving their employees an option. Personally, I think that sounds like a bad idea, but because um, then you've got twice as many operating systems to support and twice as many applications. And the big one, um, application compatibility and OS and network compatibility between the two. Now for you know a system administrator like me, no problem. I can do anything you want between two OSs, but when you're talking about standard level employees who have very limited knowledge of networking and sysadmin, it's going to be very difficult for them. Uh, somebody might hand a USB to another one or they may put a file up on a network drive and say, yeah, by the way, check this out. We need to have this report done tomorrow. And the other person opens it with Windows 10 using Microsoft Word. Now, the funny thing is LibreOffice plays very nice for the most part with Windows Office documents, but Office doesn't play nice at all for documents edited in LibreOffice. They usually are, um, a word I like to say, munged, so completely messed up. Uh, 
it just seems like you're asking for more than you want. I really would go one way or the other. I have a suspicion that Balmer probably offered a huge discount to swing them back over to Windows 10. Um, I don't think Microsoft is even, even concerned about the moneymaker aspect of, of you know, getting Munich back on Windows so much as it, it you know, gained so much publicity that an entire city would shift its public services over to Linux because Windows was too expensive. So that's quite an embarrassment for Microsoft and I really think they're pushing hard and I'm pretty sure they're about poised to do anything they need to do, even possibly free licensing to get Windows back into Munich. Now this is all supposition, I can't say if it's true or not, so uh, take it for what you will. But uh, when you go to Munich, if you do, have a talk with some of the uh, city services staff and ask them which operating system they use. That's Linux in the news for Tuesday, November 29th, and I'll see you next time.